Well, the toy industry has had to adapt in many ways in the new digital world. And while companies like Toys R Us have folded, it looks like toy stores are making a comeback. For more on that and the latest trends, I'm joined live from Chicago by James Zahn, senior editor of The Toy Book. Welcome to the show. Hello, thanks for having me. So let's start with a look at what toy, toy sales are doing now, especially in the aftermath of the Toys R Us closures. So Toys R Us obviously did give the industry a huge hit last year. Where it skewed the numbers is that in the summer of 2018, when those stores were about to close, the sales spiked about 7%. So going into 2019, all of the toy makers and the retailers were struggling to capture those numbers again. So we did see a downturn in sales uh, for 2000, 2018. They were down about 2% for the industry. But the encouraging thing is that going into the third quarter of this year, sales were actually spiking between 6 and 9% because the aftermath of Toys R Us has now gone behind us. Once we move past June, those skewed sales numbers are out of the picture. And what about changing buying patterns? You obviously have a lot more people relying on e-commerce. How is that affecting the biggest players in this space? Uh, there's some of them, like Hasbro, for example, has done really well with their Hasbro Pulse website, which is a way that they're going direct to consumer. Uh, there's other ways, too, that they're marketing across Amazon. And then, of course, the omni-channel thing, which... Target has been doing really well with their expanded toy departments and making sure that customers can purchase online and pick up at store without even entering the store. They just pull up and their order is delivered. So there's more options than ever for customers to get toys. And that's also uh, not factoring in the fact that there's so many independent toy stores that have really upped their game in the past year that are helping communities and and really showing parents and gift givers what's out there with kind of a hands-on, old-fashioned approach. And with more competition, we are seeing toy producers like Hasbro and Lego really changing their strategies to, to remain competitive. We even saw Hasbro buying music labels. We're seeing Lego opening more physical stores and tweaking their online presence. How can some of the old guard make sure they stay on top? Well, Hasbro is being pretty innovative in that they're acquiring E1, they're going through all the regulatory hurdles right now. That's moving along as planned. They're going to pick up a portfolio. The music label thing is something that gets talked about, but it's just a tiny little piece of the puzzle. They're going after E1 because it's a content producer that owns big franchises that they can exploit for toys like PJ Masks, Peppa Pig, and the recently uh, launched Ricky Zoom, which just came out on Nickelodeon. By the end of 2021 or so, all of those brands are going to get pulled in-house at Hasbro, and they will be producing the toys for some of the top preschool brands out there. The bonus, they get the film studio and the distribution channels and all of that, including music that right. E1 has to offer. Lego, they're opening more stores than ever. Uh, they've done a huge, huge push on getting into the Chinese market, which is massive for toys. Uh, within the next year or two, that's going to be the, the largest toy buying audience on the planet. And Lego is really taking advantage of that in how they're sourcing their products and how they're presenting it to families in their own retail environments that they can control. Now, you mentioned sourcing some of these products. Um, you know that we have seen some progress on the U.S.-China trade war, but the Trump administration officials have said it's not a done deal yet. How is the industry factoring this into their strategies as well as cost for customers? What we're seeing right now, as a matter of fact, with Hasbro's numbers being reported today is essentially some foreshadowing of what we're going to see as other major toy makers report their financials over the next couple of weeks. Uh, the tariffs, even though they haven't gone into effect on that list 4B, which is slated for December 15th, they're already seeing a hit from unexpected areas. Retailers are tired of the wishy-washy nature of the administration and how the dates have changed, so that's forced them to cancel orders, which toy makers have had to respond to because they're canceling orders and then rewriting orders um, to work around where the dates are falling on all of this stuff. Um, some of these toy makers are absorbing the cost. You've got retailers. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Target famously sent out a memo telling their manufacturers that they weren't going to accept price increases related to the tariffs. Right. So right now, the customers have not felt the true pinch of it, but today is the foreshadowing of what we're going to see because Hasbro got hit not only on the increased warehousing and the transportation at bringing stuff in at different times, but also some of their games were affected by the September tariffs 
because of the components that are within them. So there's a lot of complication to this in the supply channel, and it hasn't filtered to customers yet, and James, fortunately. I, I, do, I do want to get to another wrinkle just as before we run out of time. We know that there's a heightened focus on the environmental impact of some of these products. There's sustainable Absolutely. and ethical manufacturing processes, use of plastics, recycling. How is the industry responding to those pressures? I call it play for today, play for tomorrow, and there's a lot of toy makers. Lego really leading the charge with their sustainable bricks. All of their greenery is now a sustainable material. Hasbro went big adjusting their packaging. They're looking to get rid of all plastics in their packaging by next year. Um, MGA Entertainment with LOL Surprise launched a recycling program through TerraCycle, as did Zuru for their bunch of balloons. And then there's a lot of small companies like Luke's Toy Factory and Green Toys that are changing the way toys are made using materials such as recycled milk bottles or composite with wood pulp. Um, it's a very conscious thing. And for toy manufacturers right now, of course, it comes down to cost. As soon as the cost of making things that are sustainable and environmentally friendly comes down to where current production is, they'll all get on board. No one wants to do it a different way. They'd love to all be sustainable, but it, it takes time and it's right. very cost intensive. Well, thank you so much for your insights. James Zahn there, Senior Editor of The Toy Book.